Ja, da ist es kein Horrela, denn ich zählte nicht nach der Dick. Gehst du hier hin und man tut nach einer Nichel. Das ist ein old village, old mental. Um, the elders and the Caucasians gather up here in this camp. John Camp dadelt eh, zu Nichel, ach eh, nicht, Nichel, Tschachadl, look. And they work together and They eat together, they share, and they make friends. These people will attend a cultural heritage program where they will learn about traditional native lifestyles from village elders. The boat is leaving Nanana, a small Alaska town on the Tanana River. In an hour, this group will be deep inside Alaska's vast interior, arriving in an abandoned town called Old Minto, miles from any road. This is a journey where each leg will take them farther and farther from what they know and what they become comfortable with. Although they are just visiting the heritage program for a few days, the way they see the world may be changed forever. The cultural heritage program is a seven-day school attracting people from all over the world and all walks of life. Teachers planning to work in the bush and village children are the main focus of the program. Fish camps dot Alaska's riverbanks. Many rural families in Alaska spend part of the season in fish camp, trying to catch enough fish for the winter. For seven days, this group will be without a phone, radio, or TV. They'll be disconnected from one world in order to connect with another. Virgil Titus knows this river. He knows every slough and eddy. The river is always changing this basin, it's continually shifting, eroding away one bank and constructing another. It's where our tradition of chief Peter John raised his family up at every summer. He raised us, all his kids up there. We've been fishing there for years and years. Danger is always close in this country. In Alaska, a small problem can quickly turn into a critical situation. We burn a lot of gas. Just changing a gasoline line from one tank to another is a routine operation. Nevertheless, it's done with a sense of urgency. Anyway, I'll show you the island. When we get across there to that island over there, that's where our chief, traditional chief, Peter John, yeah, yeah, he raised his family up there. It's every summer he fishing over there. He's fishing over there every summer. No one will receive work schedules. No one will meet this group giving orders. To learn, these participants will have to merge with the camp and contribute on their own. Participants had an orientation before they came, but it can't completely prepare them for this experience.
put it down there. there. They'll haul it back. Kind of pile them all in one place. The old Minto Cultural Heritage Camp is a community where preparing food and gathering water consume a large portion of the day's work. Just getting the food to this remote location increases its value. Oh, put this in. Nothing is wasted. Oh, okay, bring it back. All those other things. Are... Joe! Are those your guys' or? After unloading the boats, things slow down. This can be unsettling for people from fast-paced lifestyle, and it's one of the most obvious cultural differences. Proud to say Robert that Charlie founded the Cultural Heritage Camp. He was raised in Old Minto and shaped this program to serve a wide variety of people and situations. The camp is uh, for people uh, general, people in general, and we don't, we don't have special interest groups. We just uh, look at everybody like everybody is the same. And uh, the one reason why we thought about having a camp like that is to teach the general public about our people, the Athabascan people, and uh, the way we do things and the way we talk and the way we visit and tell stories and sing. A lot of the general public don't know about these things, so, so we thought it'll be a good idea to expose ourselves and, like that and we have a very rich culture and uh, it's the people that don't understand our culture our way of knowing our way of doing things that don't understand us you couldn't find more appropriate place to teach our native ways of knowing than an old old setting like old minto native children from new minto and other villages attend the camp the isolated location is an important element, helping the kids focus. If you were in my age, you would see the difference between when I was a kid and when the kids are kids now today. They have no idea of their own culture. In New Minto, it's like any other village. They're more modernized and, and their whole ways of thinking about a community changes. The kids go their way, the elders go their way, and everybody in between, nobody is really sociable. This camp brings back cultural values common in traditional villages like Old Minto. Since the first camp more than 14 years ago, Ray Barnhart has been instrumental in its success. 14 years ago, the elders, many of whom are this, the same elders who are here now, but there were elders then who are not here anymore. For them, it was their first uh, real uh, return to their home where they had grown up and to their ancestors. And it was a very emotional reuniting where the speeches that were given were to the people back in the, uh, in the trees here in the, in the cemeteries, the ancestors who were left behind. This camp is being developed now uh, into a more permanent site is because it provides an opportunity for them to share that bond with this area, with the history of their people, uh, with their own children and grandchildren. The former town of Old Minto begins at the edge of the camp. The ruins are slowly giving away to the encroaching woods. All my family is back there in the graveyard. And I have wonderful memories here. I had 15 children here and raised them on subsistence. High river water and other problems forced the evacuation of the town. In 1970, residents relocated 25 miles to the north. Each year, the past, the present, and the future are blended. But it happens in a very special place. 
The Heritage Camp is located in the middle of a diverse natural environment. This setting is part of the lesson and part of the people. To understand the native culture, you must first understand how important nature is to them and how that relationship is interwoven into nearly every activity and every social situation. We've got eight swans right back here in the swamp here. It's a little lake there. There's a family of geese. There's a bunch of ducks. So we're surrounded by game. There's moose right across the river. I'm pretty sure there's a bear around not too far away. Smelling all this good food, but then pretty soon he's going to have a lot of good berries to eat, so we don't have to worry about him. But this is a free country, God's country. And I'm pretty sure there's enough room here for everybody that comes by. Construction is happening, kids are running around, uh, people say different things. Um, but um, I think uh, what they're trying to create, to me, is a hope for future. There's people coming from all over, at every angle, coming back here again. That makes it, it makes it look like this place is coming right back to life again. The, the old mento is still living. Golly, go on, man, Neil. I know. <laughs> this woman. <laughs> Taking your motor and running it two years and separate. I left with my sleeping bag open. Yeah. Open, yeah. yeah. Tomorrow's the day of the potluck. We'll have both boats running back and forth. And uh, some of the boats from Ninan also will be hauling people down. If anybody's got any questions to ask, anything to say, just you know, make an announcement. And Ray, I guess, will have a few words here. Too. Thank you. Uh, anyone that uh, uh, pretty or available to help bring in the water, please do so. Uh, this, going to be a lot of people here tomorrow and we're going to need a lot of water for the cooking and preparations uh, for the potlatch. Today some people will go upstream for water. Others will work around camp and spend time with the elders. Freddie Titus leads a work detail to get water. The pump is located four miles downriver from the camp. So far, it's the only place near the camp to get drinkable water. The riverbank has cut dangerously close to the pump. It was back 30 feet from the bank just a few years ago. What a lot of work it is to get some water. If you want to make a cup of tea, you'd have to get yourself all primed up to do that pumping. Laverne Dementif grew up in a rural lifestyle. She came to this camp to get closer to her traditional background. As I was a young child, before the age of 10, I was living in fish camp and uh, living more of a rural subsistence lifestyle with my parents. And then we had to move to Anchorage, so I kind of lost a lot of that. So coming back here has been really nice because, um, just because, well, I brought my son too, and he's, he's kind of been born and raised in Fairbanks, and so he's, um, it, it's been a really special for me to, to remember things. Um, that, I, that I knew as a child and then come back here and share those with him and then have the elders share with him too and share with me. I, I feel like I've learned a lot and, re, and kind of reconnected. 
especially for young children, I think, I, I, I really, when I came here, think a lot about my son, how it's so beneficial for him to grow up in a community like this. Um, I'm a single parent, so um, a lot of the men around are real influential to him, you know, for him to see them cutting up the moose and to, for, to building on the cabins and fixing the fire. These are what, what, where you can pass on a lot of the, a lot of the culture from the elders and learn a lot um, that you can share with others. And, and so I, I don't think, I, there, there is a lot of elders that are passing on, but I think that if we keep doing things like this and if we keep um, educating ourselves and, and learning um, and, or in keeping connected with the land, that, that it, it will continue, there, it, really won't, it won't die away. Elders freely share knowledge that has been passed through the ages. Some of the knowledge is built into personal stories. Village elder Neil Charlie has always been most satisfied when working. I was just telling some of the young people yesterday that the best part of my life was when I used to stay in the fish camp and well myself a fish wheel, get it where it's uh, turning. I sit down by the bank and watch that brand new fish wheel turning. And, and watch the fish get caught. That was one of my best part of life right there. My mother taught me a lot, even to go for roots. And because I was with her. And she told me, like this, like that. Elsie Titus shares her basket making skill, a craft passed from generation to generation. And let it soak and undo it, stretch it out, and start sewing with it. This is what we saw with mm -hmm. pinch hole in there. That's the scene through. River traffic always attracts attention, especially a loaded barge. Goods are welcome in the bush, but not always the change that comes with them. TVs and other amenities are often a distraction for young people. This camp brings the old ways into focus so native young people can understand their culture better. The potlatch is an important ceremony and integral to this program. It's a major community effort. Just for this occasion, a moose was hunted and wild game was prepared. The state awarded a special hunting permit for this potlatch. Beaver was also served and an Athabascan delicacy, salmon eggs. The eggs are a popular side dish for many natives even some of the other participants like them. Salmon fish egg. It's beautiful king salmon. Huge like this. It's a very good egg. This function brings the elders and the participants closer. Right. 
potlatches are a gathering of the people. This is how Native communities share, celebrate, and come together. The camp will swell to more than 100 people. People will come from Nanana, New Minto, Fairbanks, even as far as Anchorage. This celebration, designed into the Heritage Program, is the culmination of a week-long event, and the participants are now treated as community members. As part of this new role, they serve the guests. Traditionally, the elders are served first and receive the best portions of food. In our potlatches, we have speak, our elders speak. They speak with the true meaning of what they're going to say with their heart to the younger people. We want to share with you what little we have. No millionaire in this world will pull a party like this and say, come and eat with me. But in our Athabascan value, that means a lot to all our elders here, that we sit down and eat together. People from Minto come together here. People from Minto do many things that were done in earlier times, but don't get done over in New Minto. You have New Minto, you have Old Minto, and now we're getting new Old Minto going up over here. And like Bill said, where that goes, nobody knows yet. But I think everybody has an idea of how that new, mint, new old Minto can become a way for the community to share and pass on to its younger generations the knowledge and traditions that were part of living here 30, 40, 50, 80 years ago. One of the real strong messages, old people left with us. You hold each other together. Hold each other together. What's one of the strongest messages they left to us? Hope the good Lord gives you a really good blessings in return. Thank you. Thank you. May God bless everybody. Let's go. You're going home. Take some of that love with you and share it with your kids. Okay, we'll see you in Nina. After seven days, most of the camp participants leave with a different perspective on Native culture. Like Athabascan oral history, where the story is molded by the teller, this camp is always changing. It moves forward in its efforts to expand, but where it will lead, no one can be sure. Native peoples are willing to accept an uncertain future. This may be one of the more important lessons outsiders learn.
Through this program, organizers hope traditional Native culture will be carried forward in the minds of its youth and in the hearts of this camp's many visitors.